The release of Chrono Trigger brought forth another successful RPG from the creators at Squaresoft and the making of another hit series. But the next release in the series wouldn't be your standard RPG fair. It wouldn't appear on a cartridge or even a CD-ROM. The future of the franchise was destined for Nintendo's Satellaview service and the limitations it held. This is the story of the Chrono series. In this part, we'll be looking at the often forgotten second entry in the series, Radical Dreamers. We'll also be taking a look at various other Chrono Trigger related titles released on the Satellaview service. In mid-1995, Nintendo released a new add-on for their successful Famicom console. Created by Nintendo R&D2, the same team behind the Super Famicom, this new accessory was known as the Satellaview. The Satellaview offered a brand new way to play games, through the internet. Utilizing satellite broadcasting, players were able to download games to a special cartridge released with the Satellaview. Many third-party developers jumped on board to create titles for the new service, including Squaresoft. Starting in late July of 1995, three Chrono Trigger-related titles began broadcast for the Satellaview. The first was Chrono Trigger Jet Bike Special. This was an expanded version of the racing minigame from the 2300 AD section of Chrono Trigger. The other two titles, Chrono Trigger Character Library and Music Library, included deep dives into the various characters and enemies of Chrono Trigger and a collection of music from the game respectively. The character and music libraries would later be included with the port of Chrono Trigger for the PlayStation. Jet Bike Special was never released beyond the Satellaview broadcast system. Thanks to game preservationist, the title is still playable via emulators. Square's ambitions for the Satellaview service went beyond simple mini-games and library collections. In 1995, with Chrono Trigger complete, Square approached Masato Keto, the writer behind much of Chrono Trigger's story, to develop a sequel for the Satellaview service. Keito, fearing he wouldn't be able to match the success of the first game, opted to go down a different path for the next release. Instead of a full-blown RPG that spanned hours, the next iteration of the series would be a text-based adventure. Keito began work on crafting a story for this new project under the title Radical Dreamers. Once again, he was accompanied by Yasunori Matsuda, who provided the soundtrack for the game. Keito wrote the bulk of the story for the game, leaving many of the alternate endings to other writers at Square. Alongside these writers were artists designing various characters, monsters, and scenes for the game. The entire production cycle lasted only three months. Radical Dreamers was available in the Satellaview broadcast service beginning on February 3rd, 1996, with the initial broadcast running until February 9th. An additional broadcast was held later that month, from February 24th to March 1st. The entire game was available for play at the time of download, unlike other titles that released their content in piecemeal, episodic content on the Satellaview. Radical Dreamers also featured unlimited plays, whereas other titles on the service would often limit the number of plays for the player. The story of Radical Dreamers follows the main character Surge and two non-player characters, Kid and Magil. They travel through the castle of the game's antagonist, Lynx, in search of the Frozen Flame. Battles take place as the cast make their way into the castle against enemies familiar from Chrono Trigger and Final Fantasy. Radical Dreamers kept some of Chrono Trigger's role-playing game aspects. Occasional battles would occur with the player controlling Surge. While not as dynamic as Chrono Trigger's battle, every attack is described in great detail, as well-designed pixelated monsters stare through the screen. The bulk of the gameplay revolves around puzzle solving, with the player sending surgeon friends back and forth through the castle as they attempt to claim Lynx's treasure. Along the way, new characters are met, including Lady Riddle, the adopted daughter of Lynx. The entire adventure culminates with the three heroes finding out Lynx's true intentions, to take a special gift Kid received from her sister, the Chrono Trigger, during a dynamic battle over the frozen flame. Radical Dreamers is notably darker in tone when compared to the more lighthearted Chrono Trigger. The dark hallways and eerie music make the game almost feel like a horror title. However, small comedic moments help brighten the mood and keep the game from being too bleak. Kato later stated that the darker tone of the title came from working on Chrono Trigger. The long hours and hectic schedule to meet the game's release had weighed heavily on the young director. Radical Dreamers wasn't as easy to work on as either. The three-month production was rushed, and not given the same level of attention as Square's cartridge-based titles. Despite being a sequel, many of the references to Chrono Trigger were added towards the end of production, and none of the main cast make an appearance in the game. 
Cato felt the story of Radical Dreamers was left in an unfinished state, and it has been part of the reason why the game has never been re-released on any other platforms. In June of 2000, the Satellaview broadcast came to an end after a five-year run. With all broadcasts ending, titles released on the service were only playable if they had been downloaded to the special ROM cartridges needed to play them. Radical Dreamers, alongside hundreds of other titles, quickly became rare commodities, especially to those outside of Japan who never had access to the Satellaview service. To make matters worse, Radical Dreamers was never officially released in any language other than Japanese, meaning countless fans were unable to play the sequel to one of gaming's most cherished RPGs. Attempts were made to bring Radical Dreamers to other platforms over the years. A port for the PlayStation was planned for release alongside Chrono Trigger as an unlockable easter egg. However, Kato disapproved of this port due to being unhappy with the final project. A similar situation occurred when Chrono Trigger was ported to the Nintendo DS, although Kato seems more open to an official release of the long lost title. Not all hope is lost, however. In 2003, a group known as Demiforce released a fan translation for Radical Dreamers. Playable through a Super Nintendo emulator, the translation was the first opportunity for non-Japanese players to play the title. Review outlets praised the translation, and other groups took notice. Radical Dreamers was subsequently translated into other languages. While many fans of the Chrono series want to return to Radical Dreamers, Kato seems unlikely to re-release the title as is. For Kato, Radical Dreamers is not part of the official Chrono timeline. Instead, it offers an alternative reality to the events of Chrono Trigger and its subsequent sequel. But my advice to you is to play the game. While short, Radical Dreamers offers a new and interesting take on the world of Chrono Trigger. The title is relatively short, coming in at only around 3 hours of length, and has multiple endings that can be unlocked after the first playthrough. While Radical Dreamers may not be the shiny sequel Chrono fans hope to see, a new title in the series was never far off. With the basis of the next game laid out by Radical Dreamers, Kato would continue to work on new titles for Square, including the final game in the Chrono series, Chrono Cross. Thanks for watching. This is the second part in a multi-part series about the Chrono series. If you liked this video, be sure to leave a like and share on your favorite social media sites. You can catch the next episode as soon as it releases by subscribing to this channel. In the comments below, let me know your thoughts on Radical Dreamers and if you would like to see it re-released for modern platforms. In the next part, we'll be taking a look at the PlayStation Classic Chrono Cross and where the Chrono series is today.